episode Dion Sanders or Lars Newtbar if you're a Cardinal fan. Welcome to the Bullpen Podcast, episode 21. I'm actually recording on Thursday night for the first time in a long while. So, yeah, watching the uh, watching the fucking Bears and uh, Commanders right now. Almost said Redskins. Bears up 27-14 right now for reference, okay? I uh, I drafted Justin Fields in my fantasy football league this year, and I uh, I've started him every game so far, and I don't even have another quarterback on my team, so I think I'm committed. But I very quickly realized that by me doing that, it made me a Bears fan for this season just by extension because I'm rooting for him to do well so much. Like, of course, I want him to do well in general. I fucking like the guy. But yeah, I've, uh, so far I've been feeling the Bears' pain a little bit more this year. Usually I'm just making fun of the Bears. But this year I'm feeling that pain a little bit. And it's, uh, yeah. But anyway, the playoffs just started, uh, earlier this week. Let's see if I can remember off the top of my head, who won. Um, every every series ended in a sweep. I know that. Uh, each series played two games, and the winner was decided, and now we're moving on to the divisional round. So the, uh, the Diamondbacks beat the Brewers. The Twins beat the Blue Jays. The uh, Phillies beat the Marlins. And what's the other one, Adam? You can remember the other one. Oh, did I say Diamondbacks beat the Brewers? Yeah. Diamondbacks beat the Brewers in two games. Phillies beat the Marlins. Oh, my stupid ass. The uh the Rangers beat the Rays. The Rangers beat the Rays. I'll probably leave all that in there. Fuck it. I figured it out. That's fine. But yeah, every game ended in a sweep. Brewers got knocked out. Woo, boo hoo. Who cares? I'm excited for the Diamondbacks, though. They've got a young team, and they look really good, and seeing them go on a run could be a lot of fun. Rangers won. I'm happy about that. I've got money on the Rangers winning the uh, American League pennant, along with the Braves winning the National League pennant. The uh, Braves will play the Phillies, I believe, coming up, so that'll be fun to watch. But yeah, every game and every series ended in a sweep. And uh I thought it'd be fun this year. The uh the regular season ended last week. Um the Cardinals finished tied for second to last in the National League. They had the same record as the uh Washington Nationals at 71 and 91, I believe it is. And uh that's a problem because going into this season everybody and their mother would have expected the Washington Nationals to have a record that looks like that. Or worse, the Washington Nationals, I feel like, got a little bit of upside. C.J. Abrams is pretty fucking good. I don't know. But yeah, I mentioned that last week, that the Cardinals had a chance to not be second to last in the entire National League, and they uh, they fell short of that. So, yep, figured I'd follow up on that. Also following up, uh, my massive parlay of... Uh, of last Sunday for game 162 for everybody. Um, talked about that last week. That was a fun one. But yeah, that the odds on that parlay by the time that I got done with it were fucking crazy. That shit was not going to hit at all. I was talking about it on the show last week as if, you know, I had some outside chance and that the reason that I would lose is just because I've been cold lately betting on sports. I'm a fucking idiot, first of all, because the odds of this fucking thing... Let me tell you what this ended up being. This was four picks, and I, I, didn't, even use, I didn't even use all the picks uh, that I talked about in the show. That's the fucked up part. I, so I had the A's beating the Angels. That didn't happen. I had the Royals beating the Yankees. That happened. I had Mariners versus Rangers. That happened. One to zero, by the way. 
and I had the Reds. I again, I I I thought one hundred percent the Cardinals were gonna phone it in and not give a fuck about the last game, but they won. And I honestly thought the Reds were gonna win. I I'm a Hunter Green believer. The guy throws hard. I don't know, but yeah, of course it's my own fault. Um, that that ended up being plus fifteen hundred though. Uh, so yeah, not realistic. That uh, that didn't really have too much of a shot of happening anyway. But I figured it'd be fun to uh, go over who I think, if God forbid, if I had a vote for these awards at the end of the major leagues, at the end of the baseball season, I thought it'd be fun to uh, talk about who I would give these awards to, and uh, talk a little bit about that. And uh, sometime after these awards are actually announced uh, by Major League Baseball, which I believe is in November sometime is when they get announced. Um, So sometime shortly after that, me and my buddy uh, Spencer Davis, we're going to hop on a uh, episode of the bullpen together, and uh, we're going to talk about our picks, who we had. Uh, We each picked our top three. I'm only going to talk about who I picked to win in this episode, But in the next episode where we follow up on this with Spencer, uh, I'll talk about my top three, why I had them there, etc. There's a lot of fun stuff that I think we could talk about. So that'll be a fun episode uh, with Spencer. So, yeah. First off, MVP of the National League, I've got Ronald Acuna Jr. Jr., Jesus. Ronald Acuna Jr. is who I've got. Um, he's had a fucking great year. He's got a stolen base record, 70 stolen bases, I think it was. Something crazy. Let me check. See, now I gotta check. He did steal 70 bases. I was fucking right. He stole 73 bases. He hit 40-some fucking home runs. Uh, he led the league in hits. Ronald Acuna Jr. Jr. God, that's twice. That's brutal. I'm leaving it in, though. I'm committed. I want to do less editing. I don't give a fuck. (laughs) But Ronald Acuna Jr. has had a hell of a year. 41 home runs. Led the league in hits at 217. 73 stolen bases. First person ever to go to have a season 40-plus home runs, 70-plus stolen bases. It's literally never happened before. So, yeah, easy MVP award. And American League, I've got Shohei. Easy fucking choice. Shohei missed some time with injury near the end of the season, but I don't think that shit mattered at all. Nobody else pitched at that level, and nobody else hit at that level. Um, he did something. I He continues to do things that we will never see again, and he had a great year in both sides, so I'm inclined to, to give him a vote because simply nobody else can physically even attempt it. But, uh, yeah, Shohei had a good year pitching. I think his ERA was like 3.2-something. Led the American League in home runs at 44. Again, with that missed time with the injury, didn't matter. He still led the entire American League in home runs, 44. He hit over 300. He had a great fucking year. Cy Young Award, best pitcher in the National League. I'd give it to Blake Snell of the San Diego Padres. I wasn't even particularly a Blake Snell believer before this year, but for whatever fucking reason, he put in a career year. Um, I hope he does just as well, or at least pretty close to this well next year, because it was a contract year for him, and I swear there's some kind of pattern of guys having a fantastic year a career year in their contract year you know you really lock in whatever it is that makes that happen you know I don't know I'm not a fucking athlete anymore but I've, I feel like I've seen it before but you know you got to give it to him he had a hell of a year 2.25 ERA it was the best in the in all of baseball by a lot next uh second best was Garrett Cole at 2.63 So, Blake Snell, hell of a fucking year for the Padres. Just about every time he was on the mound, uh, he was kicking the shit out of everybody. So, 
he had a great year. I think my dad had him on fantasy too, so that makes a lot of sense. He won he won the league. He won our fantasy league, so congrats to him. Congrats, Dad. Uh, he had a strong lead throughout the entire year. His team was fucking stacked, so good for him. He fucking deserved it. I went from second place at the All-Star break to sixth place when it was all said and done, but... We'll get them next year, you know? Uh, Cy Young American League, another easy choice, Garrett Cole. He was by far the best pitcher in the in the American League, I think. Uh, again, Shohei had a great year, but Garrett Cole was pretty fucking unstoppable no matter what, and he stayed healthy all year. Um, started 24 games. He was second in ERA. Uh, in all of baseball, first in the American League for ERA, that 2.63 that I talked about earlier. But yeah, he had a great year. Garrett Cole's been good forever. I uh, I was at a game in, it might have been 2018, where uh, we went and uh, and we were sitting down the, the right field line and the seats weren't the best. It was a good time. I went with went with a friend from Lincoln. It was a good time. But uh I remember Garrett Cole was on the Astros and uh he was pitching against the Cardinals that day and we lost like seven to fucking one. I remember Daniel Ponce de Leon for the Cardinals. Um he wasn't yeah, I won't say shit about him. <laughs> but it was not a good day. For the birds that day. And every time I think about Garrett Cole, I remember that shit. So, congrats, Garrett Cole. I think you were the best pitcher in the American League. Fucking go fuck yourself. Uh, Rookie of the year. Pretty easy choice. Uh, Corbin Carroll of the Arizona Diamondbacks. He hit for power. He stole bases. He hit for average. He did it all. This dude is fucking crazy. Um... Great pick for fantasy next year. Holy shit, he does everything. Uh, he's a big reason for why the Diamondbacks are as good as they are. I'd uh, again, I'd love to see them make a run. And uh, I think Corbin Carroll's like already hit a home run or something in the playoffs. So, um, yeah, Corbin Carroll, easy choice. Uh, Jordan Walker, he didn't have a bad year. I've talked about Jordan Walker a decent amount uh, this year. Um, I've loved watching Jordan Walker every time that I've been to a Cardinals game. He makes plays in right field. He's hit for a decent average this year. He hit more home runs near the end of the year. Um, Jordan Walker had a very good year, and he's going to be a really fucking good ball player. So I will say that, but it is Corbin Carroll for me. Uh, American League Rookie of the Year. I might be a little bit biased here, but I'm going Masataka Yoshida of the Boston Red Sox, uh, Shohei Otani's teammate from the Japan national team. Uh, Yoshida's a guy who mostly hits for average, doesn't hit a ton of home runs. Let me see how many home runs he hit. It wasn't a lot. Um, but uh, I hey, honestly, I like the guy. He had a good year. He was... Uh, I had him on my fantasy team too, and he was the only outfielder that I could consistently start the entire year. So again, I could be biased. I I like the guy. Whatever. Uh, he had 15 home runs. That's pretty solid. 15 home runs, 72 RBIs. Uh, he hit 289. That's a great fucking season. I mean, I I stand by that all day. Uh, yeah, that's a great that's a great year. He's a rookie. Um, who knows. He could probably get a whole lot better, too. But, yeah, I'm giving it to him. He was consistent. He was great all year. He was hitting above 300 for the majority of the year, too, by the way. Um, again, I would know. He was on my fantasy team. Go fuck yourself. Uh, lastly, best managers of the year. Uh, the Atlanta Braves have been fucking insanely good the entire season. Their lineup is crazy good. I think they got like five dudes with 30-plus home runs. I mean, Matt Olson. if Ronald Acuna Jr. doesn't have a historic season that he's had, Matt Olson's probably the MVP. Matt Olson's hit 54 home runs, uh, led the league in RBIs by a lot. He's got 139, second highest Pete Alonso with uh, 118. 
So Matt Olson has had a fucking amazing year, and uh, the MVP is pretty much already in Acuna's hands. Um, that's pretty much how it is. But everyone knew the Braves were going to be good this year. They won the World Series in, uh, was it 21, I think? Yeah, they cause they didn't win last year. I think the Astros won last year. Uh, but I believe it was the year before that that the Braves won. And ever just because everybody knew you were going to be good, that doesn't mean that the manager doesn't uh, doesn't deserve recognition. So Brian Snicker, uh, <clears throat> manager of the Atlanta Braves, I think I'd give him best manager. Um, clearly, they're doing something fucking amazing down there in Atlanta that nobody else can replicate. The uh, not even the Dodgers, in my opinion, the Dodgers won a hundred games. They had a very good year. Um, they're right up there with the Braves, but the Braves sub- are something else this year. I mean, they, they are a force to be reckoned with. They've been crazy good. Um, Austin Riley, Matt Olson, Ronald Acuna Jr., Michael Harris II, uh, Sean Murphy. I could fucking go on. They've got dogs on that team. Uh, so yeah, Brian Snicker. Jesus. <laughs> that sounded like the word that white people can't fucking say. <laughs> I don't know. That's a that was a close one. Let's fucking wrap this up before something worse happens. <laughs> so, uh, manager of the year in the American League, I think it's a slam dunk, easy choice. Uh, Brandon Hyde of the Baltimore Orioles. Nobody and their mother, nobody's mother even, thought the Baltimore Orioles were gonna fucking be good this year. Nobody thought that was gonna happen. I mean, okay, I'll I'll backtrack a little. People thought that they were going to be good because they were pretty decent last year. So people were ready for them to be good, but they won 101 games, and they won that division, which is a crazy tough division. Um, so yeah, I again, that's not some shit that happens by accident. Um, you got to tip your cap to the guy who's leading those uh that dugout there. So. Again, Baltimore Orioles, Brandon Hyde, American League Best Manager of the Year, in my opinion. So that wraps that up. We'll see how long this ends up being, but I was clicked in the fucking MLB stat, so I haven't been watching this recording. But uh, yeah, there's my award picks in uh, about a month and some change. Uh, oh, bump the mic. In a, some, in a month and some change, be on the lookout for... Uh, episode of the bullpen with me and Spencer Davis uh talking about the the awards and uh who we had as our top 3 and why that'll be a fun one I'm excited for that uh Spencer's a cool motherfucker so I I said they were going to be guests so you know uh that Spencer's going to be a guest upcoming that'll be fucking sweet man this will be sweet but yeah I uh I think that's about it that's about all I had um I've I've got some good writing momentum. I've been able to write at least a page or so each of the last three nights. I've been writing some comedy as well. Um, I'm definitely wanting to get back on stage and do some stand-up, but there's no... Uh, I don't know how close open mics are to me outside of driving close to two hours to St. Louis. That seems to be my only option right now. So God forbid if anybody has uh, other suggestions for me, I'm very open to listening. But, yeah, not much to complain about, man. Uh, I'm in a good fucking mood. I'll be back next Friday, as always. Last Bears update, sneaking it in here. Bears are up 30-20 to 20 with 10 minutes left in the game, so... <clears throat> Bears fucking choked last week, so we'll get to see if they pulled this one out or not. I think they got it. Again, I'm a fu- I have to be a Bears fan a little bit this year. I I didn't think it was ever going to happen. I've made a lot of jokes about the Bears, and I take none of it back, but now I'm I'm kind of in it. I'm rooting for Justin Fields big time. So hopefully the Bears can fucking hold on. Hopefully Justin Fields throws four more touchdowns so I can lock down my fantasy game this week. But we'll see. (laughs) I'm getting out of here. I'll be back next Friday as always. Have a great fucking weekend.